Bismillahirrahmanirrahim <coughs> Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Nesta'inuhu ve nastaghfiruhu ve nu'minu bihi azze ve celle Ve eşhedü en la ilahe illallah ve vahdehu la şerike la Ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abdehu ve rasuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain Amma ba'd Ayyuhal Muslimun <clears throat> With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer All praise to Allah, the God and evolver, the cherisher, keeper, sustainer Of all the systems of knowledge, all the systems of science We seek his help, we ask for his forgiveness We put our faith and our trust in him Mighty and sublime is he I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone, the one and only, there is none like unto him. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to whom the Quran was revealed 1400 years ago, is Allah's servant, messenger prophet to all of mankind. We ask Allah's peace, his blessings, his science exaltations, be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Upon his family, his companions, the righteous all On you O Muslims, the peace Assalamu alaikum Greetings to our brothers here, Masjid Muhammad The few brothers we have here for the Jum'ah prayer Our Masjid is not officially open again yet We're thinking about uh, after the 4th of July To see what kind of progress the President is saying that we expect to have, or hope to have, a uh, great majority of the population, the public, that will be fully vaccinated. So he has set the date, the president, President Joe Biden, and we pray that Allah, God bless him, to have a safe, successful journey while he's in Europe, and return him back to America safely. We pray for his success. Uh, his success is our success. He's the President of the United States of America <clears throat> and the President that I voted for and he's doing a, a very good job and we thank God for him. Keep him healthy, give him good health and uh, long life. And our uh, Vice President Kamala Harris made us so proud when she stepped off that big jumbo jet over in Guatemala and Mexico. So proud to see that. First time in the history uh, the United States is definitely the first time for us as African Americans. So let us not <clears throat> ignore <clears throat> these powerful signals and powerful signs from God that things are changing. Uh, I know you still got a lot of crazy stuff too, but things are changing. The winds are favorable. Uh, you know, Frederick Douglass, one of our forefathers, great abolitionist, abolition means working for freedom. He said, power concedes nothing without demand. So it's not like the people in power, used to all that power, will just hand it over. <laughs> uphill, uphill battle, uphill climb. Aqaba, the Quran calls it. The path that is steep, it's gonna be a steep climb. But we, we, we do our part and leave the rest up to Allah. 
So greetings to our uh, community. I saw a couple of our sisters just joined us too. I saw Lake of Peace with you all. Uh, greetings to our community that are still home. I hope you all are staying safe here in Jacksonville, members of Masjid Muhammad, Jacksonville Masjid Al-Islam. To all the Muslims all over the United States of America that are joining us and join us on a regular basis, we say greetings and peace to you, to our Christian friends, peace be with you, our Jewish friends, Shalom. Uh, and again, we offer our prayers to our uh, brothers and sisters who are uh, dealing with illness, Sister Fatia Muhammad, Brother Dwayne, and others. We pray for your recovery by Allah's grace and mercy. Greetings to my family and the Islamic Association of DeSoto, Texas, all those wonderful young people we have over there. I'm so proud of them. They're doing really wonderful academically and achieving on very, very high levels. So greetings to you all in DeSoto, Dallas, my family and friends and extended family there. Greetings Junaina, Muslims in Malaysia, Omidosa, Virgin Islands, family and friends in Bermuda, Brazil, Philippines, Indonesia, Pakistan. I saw some of you all join us from Pakistan. Uh, Saudi Arabia regular, uh, Khalid Abdul Islam in the Northern Marinas Island, Saipan. Greetings to all of you and so many of you who have been with us when we started. My dear friend Ajib Bilal in uh, Albania also, greetings. And so many of you that you choose by your own choice to tune in to Masjid Muhammad for Juma Prayer or on Al Islam Worldwide Ministry or YouTube now to our audience, our YouTube live audience. And it's growing, our YouTube live audience. And those of you all who are on YouTube, please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything uh, to subscribe. And, and YouTube is every month they send me an update of how we're growing. So the numbers are growing, like even on YouTube now. We just started with them not too long ago live. And those numbers are growing on YouTube. So we thank Allah. Almighty God for all of his blessings. In regards to the COVID cases, more progress. I know you all are keeping up with it. Uh, the vaccine seems to be working. Cases are dropping, deaths are dropping, hospitalizations are dropping. So uh, we thank Allah for that mercy and blessing to us. Now we did this last week, we started it last week. Let's do it again today. So have a silent, a moment of silent prayer for peace, Cooperation, mutual respect, human beings all over the globe working to get along with each other, not hate each other. That should be a peace. So we uh, probably me a prayer. So we want to pray for world peace and cooperation. And pray in whatever mode you know. Let's have a moment of silent prayer. I mean, God be with us. And uh, the G7 meeting today, see in this world we live in, you can't live by yourself, you can't do it all by yourself, you can't get along. This is interdependent. Nobody's independent but God. The rest of us are interdependent. We depend on each other. Europe depends on America, America depends on Europe. Canada, uh, the Prime Minister, uh, uh, Justin Trudeau, he's there. Uh, Merkel and the major nations in, in Europe. And uh, President Biden has re-engaged us, got us back. And I heard one of the reporters uh, yesterday were talking about the trip of the President to visit with Europe. And she said, the European nations are so happy that America, the most powerful nation on earth, still, uh, is re-engaged, is re-engaged in the world. And she said, the former president traumatized the European nations. <laughs> not my words, her word. <laughs> oh, well, we pray for peace. And look like, I hope now, this is big, big hope, so keep, this, keep them in the prayers. Uh, Look like the Israelis are tired of fighting, the Palestinians are tired of their families and children dying after 73 years, and they're realizing they're going to have to learn to live together. And I mentioned this last week. The new coalition government in Israel includes the Israelis, 
Arab Israelis. Arab Israelis for the first time bringing them to the table. So they have the far right in their group. They have the centrists to form the coalition government and they included the Arab Israelis to come to the table. I said, well, it's changing, it's changing. Still a long way to go. Our subject today, <clears throat> the sorting of the crowds, the sorting of the crowds. Chapter 39, Lake Meccan Surah is titled Azuma. So there's a chapter in the Quran titled, I've spoken on this before, but it's a different context I'm going to give you today. Uh, if there's a chapter in the Quran, there's a, there are 114 chapters in the Quran called Surahs. Whatever the title is on that chapter, God is elevating it to importance for the prophet, Revelation to prophet. There's one called Aneblum, the ants, chapter 27. Now that's, that's a little, little insect crawling around, nobody pays attention to. God get a chapter. And Nebu, the ants. And Amazon learned from the ants. Now they, they didn't study the ants. So Solomon took that headache off of them. He studied the ant and saw the assembly line process. Yeah, saw the assembly line process. So Allah elevated the ant and Nebu. Nobody paying attention. Here Muhammad, that's the chapter 27. And then God elevated the bee. These are insects now, small creatures. Chapter 16, and Nahlu, the name of the masjid in Tallahassee, our friend and my uh, childhood friend, Imam Rashad, Mujahid, spoke with him yesterday, coming through there. So, and, and Nahlu, the bee. Oh, God revealed that chapter to Prophet Muhammad, the bee. And all the benefits that come from the bee, particularly the honey that comes out of the bee. Yeah, Dr. C.B., he talked about that a lot. And God, but God mentioned it before Dr. C.B., God rest his soul, about in the honey, that the honey is benefit, medicinal benefit. That's in the Quran. But God focused attention on that little insect to be. And then the spider, eh? insect, small creature, the spider, chapter 29, the spider, elevated the spider. So this chapter is titled, Azura, the Cry. The sorting of the crowds. And I remember growing up, as many of us, if we reflect, and our parents used to tell us, son, daughter, be careful of the crowds that you hang out in. Now, I didn't know anything about the Quran growing up. No. And then I'm reading a chapter. Hey, wait a minute. There's a chapter 39 called The Crowd. There must be something to these crowds. We gotta look at these crowds. And Muhammad the prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, he said in his instructions, teachings in the hadith, he says, one should be careful with their association in the crowds and the people they hang around because you tend to take on the characteristics. You tend to emulate the people that you're around. He says, so be careful of your crowds. Be careful of your associations. You know the old cliche in this society, in the culture of uh, the, uh, Muslims and others around the world, uh, we have a saying, I don't know if this is true globally, uh, birds of a feather, using the bird as a metaphor, birds of a feather flock together. Hmm? You don't see eagles hanging out with pigeons. No, I mean, it's funny, but they don't. And the pigeons can't fly with the eagles. They can only go so high. They can't get up there and you can say, oh, you trying to hang on? Okay, watch this. The pigeons say, that ain't, that, ain't, that ain't my level. I can't, I can't go there. So pigeons hang out with pigeons. Eagles soar with eagles. Donkeys hang out with donkeys. Racehorses hang out with racehorses. They don't race donkeys. At the Belmont Stakes in the Preakness, thoroughbreds, stallions, thoroughbreds hang out with thoroughbreds, stallions hang out with stallions, dogs hang out with dogs. Now every now and then you'll see dogs and cats getting along. Yeah, they be friendly. The cats usually hang out with cats. But if you got pets or you notice pets, they, they, they nature the human being and smaller, they get along with cats. They don't have no problems. The cat get along with the dog. Here we are, human beings. 
Dogs and cats can get along sometimes. We got master's degrees, bachelor's degrees, PhD, doctor in front of our name. And we can't get along with another person. Now, human being now, they're not a, not a different species, maybe a different ethnic group of ethnicity, but the dog and the cat, completely different species. And so they're hanging out, laughing, and playing. They're okay. Human beings hating each other because of the color of their skin or the uh, ethnic group that they belong to. Don't even have dog and cat sense. So God brings to the attention of Muhammad the prophet this chapter and zoom out the crowds. And I began reading Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. With God's name, the merciful, benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Verse 1. I'm going to read verse 1 through 3, which is introducing the chapter, and then go right over to the, the sorting of the crowds that start at 71 and 75. Tanzil al Kitabi, Men Allah il Aziz il Hakim, Son of Allah Adin, God the Mighty spoke the truth. This is verse 1 of Azuma, the crowds. Now think of the crowds in this life and think of the crowds in the next life. Which group you want to be a part of? We'll get there. The revelation of this book is from God. The exalted in power, full of wisdom. So right here in the first verse, God tells Prophet Muhammad, the revelation of this book came from God. The one who has, he's El Aziz El Hakim, the most power and the most wisdom. Verse 2. Verily, it is we who have revealed the book. Now, when it says we, let's not get confused. It's not talking about multiple gods here now. No. Allah used his angel, Jibreel, to bring the revelation to the prophet. Though he assigned him, he put him on an assignment. Jibreel is the angel, Gabriel, for our Christian brothers and sisters and our Jewish uh, brothers and sisters. You all, you know, you speak Hebrew, so Torah is in Hebrew, so you know it's Jabriel, Jibreel. Uh, so Allah, he uses angels. So he included his angels when he said, we. He can say, I did it. He said, no, we. And Imam Muhammad, he said, why does God, who's the all-powerful, and Aziz and Hakim, the all-powerful and the wise, why does he use the pronoun we sometimes? He said to remind us that we shouldn't be saying I all the time. <laughs> if God can say we, we should say we. Well, it is we. God and his angels, he dispatched, who have revealed the book to thee, O Muhammad. He doesn't say, O Muhammad. He laid cap, that's singular. Nobody received the Quran except Prophet Muhammad. No disrespect to any of our great companions or the great companions of Prophet Muhammad. No disrespect. But none of them received not one verse of the Quran. Not Abu Bakr. May Allah be pleased with him. Not Umar. Allah be pleased with him. Not Uthman. Allah be pleased with him. Not Ali. I'm, I named the four caliphs. And from the female side, not Aisha. May Allah be pleased with her. Not the prophet's wife, Khadija. May Allah be pleased with her. Nobody, nobody received one verse of the Quran. Not one letter of it. Except Muhammad the prophet, prayers and peace be upon him. All of it was given to the prophet. All 114 chapters of it. There it is we who have revealed to thee, O Muhammad. The book, Bilhah, in truth, with Bil, with truth, and with reality. God is telling Prophet Muhammad, what I'm giving you, Muhammad, through the angel Jibreel bringing the message, it is consistent with reality. No fiction, no fantasy, no make-believe. You can step out into the real world with it and feel comfortable with it. You have a partner with the real in the real world. You can take the Quran in the real world and it won't fail you. It won't disappoint you in the real world of science, 
in the real world of business, in the real world of government, in the real world of the social order, in the real world of family life, in the real world of the culture. The Quran will not fail you. It will not disappoint you because it is the book, as God says, that's connected with the natural world of reality. So serve God. So serve God. Offer him sincere devotion. Muklis. To be sincere. Be genuine. And verse 3. And it is not poppy question is it not to Allah God is asking a question of Muhammad the prophet and subsequently to us who listen to and read the Quran is it not to Allah God your creator I mean that that sincere Khalisu devotion is due this is a question but it's a question based on reason. It's a question based on logic. Is it not to God that sincere devotion is due? Well, now you got to think about that. Who made you? Who created us? Who created this world and gave it to us? Who put us in this world? See, once you start thinking like that, God is asking the question. Okay, once you use your reason and your logic, is it not to Allah that you should be devoted to the one that created you from the beginning and gave you life and brought you in existence and had everything prepared for you before you got here? Yeah. You didn't have to go look for trees. They were already here. Didn't have to look for apples. Already here. Didn't have to look for oranges. Already here. Didn't have to look for fish. Already here. Didn't have to look for chicken. Already here. Huh? Whatever we needed was already here. Didn't have to look for parents to take care of us and raise us. Already here for those who did it. Hmm? Didn't even have to go uh, shopping for sustenance. God gave it to the mother because he already knew he was going to need it. So the baby comes in, hey, I'm hungry. So don't worry about that. Just stay close to your mother. She got what you need, little baby. And just gave it to him. Little milk, right? He ain't got to go shopping for nothing. So is it not to Allah that sincere devotion is due? Question. But those who take, now this is addressing the idol worshippers now, but those who take for protectors, awliya'ah, other than Allah, say, now here's their excuse, we are only serving these idols and these things in order that they may bring us nearer to Allah. Really? Allah revealed to the prophet, truly Allah, We'll judge between them and that where they differ. But a lot of guys not such as are false and ungrateful. Now that's the beginning of the chapter. So let's go to the verses that talks about the sorting of the crowds. But I want to give you that first. <clears throat> All right, chapter uh, 39, verse 71. وَصِيْقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَا زُمَرَىٰ Crowds, right there. So this is what first introduction of this word in the chapter itself, Zumara, verse 71. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُهَا Now as I'm reading this, think about the society, the environment we're living in, and the world environment. United States, around the world, all over the earth, think about it. God is addressing this, these different groups. Hatta <laughs> 
لقاء يوم لقاء يومكم هذا قالوا بل ولكن حقت كلمات كلمات عذابي على الكافرين the unbelievers the disbelievers the kafirun will be led to hell in crowds nobody want to go to hell by themselves misery loves company that's another cliche those of you all in the world I don't know if you have that around the world old saying in America misery loves company miserable people people who spirit have them living in hell and the attitude always hellish they always looking for somebody to be in hell with them they don't want to be there by themselves so they transfer their misery if you allow it they will transfer their misery and their bad spirit and their bad attitudes to you got open ear for it they'll make it miserable just like them unhappy, just like them. In hell, just like them. Now how you know they're in hell? Because they'll tell you, I'm catching hell. So they just told you, in hell, just pay attention. I say, how you doing? I'm catching hell. Oh, whoa. I, don't, I really don't want to be around you right now unless we can see if we can pull you out of hell into heaven. Now, dear Muslims, I don't think we have this problem in America. So I'm addressing our brothers and maybe some sisters around the world, but I don't mean it our brothers. When the Quran says unbelievers, dear Christians, listen to this now, Jews, listen to this. From the book, you understand me. When the Quran says Kaharu, unbelievers, you know who it's talking to? Atheists. People that have no faith in God. No belief in God. That's Catholic. It's not talking about Christians who have faith in God, Jews who believe in God, Buddhists who believe in God, Sikhs who believe in God. It's not talking about those people. So don't form in our minds in America and don't let our brothers who unknowingly, unwittingly, I don't think many, many of them are innocent from overseas. Many of them innocent. They have been under colonization for so long. They have been oppressed in their lands by many of their own leaders for so long, Western powers, that they have developed over time an innate, inherent envy and jealousy towards the West and hatred, some of them, towards the West. So anything they can read in the Quran, find in the Quran, they think will help advance their cause of hatred to the West, they pick it up. So they know most of the people in the West don't know Arabic. So they'll say, infidel. You infidels. What's that? That's an English word. That's not an Arabic word. That's an English word. That word came up during the Crusades. Yeah, during the era of the Crusaders with Salah ad and and uh, all of the Knights of the Templars and that whole scenario during the Crusades, Middle Ages. So it has survived to the day, infidels. But the Quran, when it uses that term, it uses Catholic. So they are translated, infidel. What does that mean? A disbeliever in God. Infidel doesn't mean a Christian. Infidel doesn't mean a Jew. I want this clear to you all out there. And when the Quran says unbeliever, in English, Kafiru, Arabic, plural, Kafar, it is talking about atheists. It is not talking about Christians, Jews, and people of faith. Okay? So my dear Christian brothers and sisters, I want you all to know that. Well, they, well, they didn't want to debate. They didn't want to debate. They want to debate. Come on. Come on. Prove me that. Prove me wrong. The unbelievers will be led to hell in crowds. Summa. They don't want to go by themselves. That's why they're in crowds. Until when they arrive there at hell, connected with this world and the next, 
until when they arrive there, their spirits are there, its gates will be open. They find themselves in hell. And its keepers will say, well, you don't want to be one of those people. Or one of them. You don't want to be a, hell, a gatekeeper for hell. Did not the question, did not messages come to you all from among yourselves? Rehearsing to you the signs of your Lord and warning you. In other words, they had prophets and messengers before Muhammad the prophet. And God says you have messengers. People that deliver messages on this earth throughout all times. Muhammad the prophet is the last prophet. But not the last messenger. Challenge me on that. Show me the verse. That says. Khatim and Rasul. Not in the Quran. No waste time. Khatim and Nabiim. Seal of the prophets. But there will always be teachers. Bringing the message that the prophet brought. To teach it. This is common sense. But you have some of our people overseas close their eyes. They don't want to read the Quran because they have something in their minds. They have things in their mind too now. Remember, a lot of them are shaped intellectually from their environment, their teachers, their books, their education. So they have these ideas in their head. But I'm not, I'm open-minded. We In America, the only agenda we have in this country is to establish our community life right alongside everybody else. We ain't trying to take over America. For what? God doesn't intend that. We're not trying to hurt Americans. For what? We are Americans. So we we don't have that issue. Now we we start talking about our history. Well now, okay, that's that's a different subject now. That's that's a, that is a different issue. But that that has less to do with religion and more to do with historical uh events that took place in this country. And by the way, we didn't do it. We were victims of it. You know, talking about slavery, Jim Crow, and all that crazy stuff that they're trying to revive. Jim Crow laws. Not going to work. If you have any success, it's going to be short lived. I'm talking to them now. Extreme people on the right. Your days are numbered. God's mercy. That's the only reason why you he still allows you to have some room because of his mercy. Did not messengers come to you from among yourselves rehearsing to you the signs of your Lord and warning you of the meeting of this day, the day of reckoning. We're living in the day of reckoning. Not just in the hereafter. This is the day of reckoning. And it's the day of reckoning for all tyrants, dictators, oppressors. Yeah, it's the day of reckoning. God allowed them, like Satan says in the, in the book, Satan asked God to give me respite. Give me time, God, to let me work my thing. And God said, go on, but you're not going to attract my devoted ones. They're not going to get caught up in that. Go, if you think you got something, go, let's see what you got. Now, uh, as Malcolm said, God forgive me, sin and grand paradise. Chickens have come home to roost. And they ain't just roosting. They, they, they making loud sounds. The day of reckoning. The violence that was perpetrated on us, that violence has found its way into the American public almost daily. Yeah, we're living in the day of reckoning. Time for the accounts, the books to be open. What have you all done? As the Bible says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me all these whole people. It's the day of reckoning. Time to pay up, people. I have a book here I'm going to read to you in the second part. It's time to pay up. In many ways, I'm not just talking about reparations now. That's just one side of it. That's the money side. I'm not just, I'm not just talking about that. The day of reckoning is here. You just can't tell African Americans anything anymore in America and they believe it. Mm -mm. And our culture is exported all over the globe. 
have burst through the walls and the dams, the social dams and the social walls in America spread all over the world. Every nation have rappers in it. <laughs> they got some in Saudi Arabia too. I saw a couple of brothers rapping in Arabic. I said, man, that came off Duval Street. Pearl Street. Ashton Davis. Lord Avenue. They over here in Mecca. They got the influence from Florida Avenue in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, Egypt. They're on YouTube. They ain't nothing those people do about it. They're reckoning it. And the Bible again says, Did any good thing come out of Nazareth? Any good thing come from those people? We thought we got rid of them. Say, and we warn you of the meeting of this day of yours, the day of reckoning. The answer will be, yeah, true. But the decree of punishment has been proven true against the disbelievers. This is God. If you're the problem, this is prophecy now. It happens throughout all time. It happens in different parts of the world. I'm just, my reference point, because I live in America, in the social history I have come from, and a part of now, I'm referencing it and making it more relevant to where I'm at. But this is applicable across the world. Verse 72. To them will be said, the oppressors, the dictators, the tyrants, the disbelievers, to them will be said, Enter you the gates of hell to dwell therein. And evil is this abode for the arrogant. You, you see what it says? If you listen up, the Quran is taken away. I started off reading this with Bill Hock. With reality, truth, the fairy tale fiction of the devil with a red suit on, a tail, a pitchfork, two horns, fiction. You can walk around with hell inside of you. You can be burning in the fires of hell in your mind. You can be burning in the fires of hell. You have allowed your spirit to enter the gates of hellfire inside of you. And thus you become a servant of Satan, knowingly or unknowingly. So get rid of this myth, mysticism. Now I know we live in America, and I and I and I know different parts of the world. You all have traveled, many of you, many of you all live in other parts of the world, what I'm going to say right now. You turn their television on, you don't see the mythologies and the fiction that we have in the United States. Give an example. Commercialization has spread all over the world. In America, America uses mythology and fiction for commercialization. What are you talking about, yeah, yeah. Well, you'll see, you'll see the commercials. Dogs sitting in a car driving a car. Dogs don't drive cars. Human beings drive cars. So they have the dogs selling us a vehicle. But when you go to the dealership, you say, well, where the dog at that was driving the car? They say, what you talking about? See, that's fiction promoting Commercialization, commerce. And that's it. That's just one example. So now I see another one selling a car. The little beaver is in the back. He done took the carrots, eating the carrots. Well, first of all, where did he get the carrot from? He showed up with a carrot? Fiction. Now you keep selling this. And then they got the bands. Commercialization. Now 
he's in this business, selling toilet paper. Bears don't use toilet paper. Nowhere else in the world, unless it's the Western world, you can go to China. You're not going to see that on TV. I've been to China. You're going to see it. Mexico, unless they've got some commercials coming out of America. You're not going to see that. Kenya and Africa, you're not going to see it. But I must admit, I was in Egypt one time, and I was surprised. This is back in 1987, 88. And I turned the TV on. They had fallen victim to the mythological promotion of commercialism through myth. So they had a caricature, an animated, it wasn't real, image. Now I'm in Egypt. True story. They had an animated cartoon of James Brown. And they had him sing, he was promoting cake. And they had him singing it out. And I have forgot it to this day. And I'm spoon, and I'm spoon, and I'm spoon, boop, boop, boop. And it was a little tune, I feel good. Uh, nah, 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 nah. That's the tune that was playing on the TV in Egypt. And I said, wow, my Lord. I don't even know if James Brown know they got him over here in Arabic, singing in Arabic about I feel good selling some cake. They had become victims of myth from the West to promote commercialism. Commercialism. So with this devil concept, hell concept, heaven concept, they present it to the world under the guise of mythology. So you have to remove the myth so that people can understand. When you're reading scripture talking about hell, it's talking about the conditions you are living in. In this world. And you got to come out of those hellish conditions. Come out of the hellish spirit you have. And, and get out of those gates in that condition that you live in. And now, let's go to the next verse. To them will be said, I'm still going to enter the gates of hell to dwell therein. You disbelievers, you have allowed yourself, you don't believe in God. Your whole mind and spirit will consume you in a virtual hell. And evil is the home for the arrogant. See? So God tell us, arrogance, hell, hell, all that's connected. See? Arrogance, that's the disposition of the hell, the, the dwellers of hell. Arrogance. Verse 73. Now this is the opposite crowd. Wasika ladina takaw. Rabbahum ila jannati sumar. Hatta ida jauha. وفتحت أبوابها وقال لهم كزناتها سلام عليكم didn't say us سلام عليكم تبتم فتقلوها خالدين قلوها خالدين and those who fear their Lord have taqwa regardful of their Lord will be led they will live in, in their spirits, in their minds, in this life. So hell, some portion of it in this life. Big hell, next life. Heaven, some portion of this life. Big God of paradise, next life. Those who are regardful of their Lord will be led to the gods in crowds. So here go two groups of crowds. Here go two crowds. Sorting of the crowds. One. Regardful of God, conscious of God, they live in paradise in their state. They have a state of paradise. The other one lives in hell. They don't believe in God. Until behold, the righteous will arrive there. Arrive, what do you mean? Arrive in your spirit. Arrive in your mind. And once you arrive there, its gates internally will be opened. And its keepers will say, Salam alaikum. Mm, peace on you. You live in peace. Now that's here and in the next life. The angels will say it there, over there. But here, your mind is at peace. Your soul is at peace. Well, have you done? You've done well. You've done well. God has blessed you. Enter now. Oh, that's beautiful. Enter now in this gate of peace, this paradise, 
where you will live holy dead forever. But you got to start on this side. You got to get some of it here. You got to experience some of it here. And then when we exit here, get on the other side, we'll be welcome to greeting salam on. They don't have to say because assalam means God obligates you, the peace giver obligates you to keep the peace here. Over there, the peace is already set. And you ain't disturbing Jannah, paradise. That's not, when you get there, it's already set. So no need to say, you obligate to keep the peace. Oh, no, 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 no. The peace is already there. You entering into that big area of peace. So the angels greet, salam on alaykum. And the family members, salam on alaykum. The children that have gone and the and the grandparents and the great grandparents and the relatives and the friends and all the people that preceded us, they, they say when we show up and, and God forbid that, make that long day off a lot, that will keep us around here a long time to help turn this heaven's place into a place of heaven as much as we can. But we get over there, they say, Salam on alaykum. Come on, come on in here. You did well. Verse 74, I conclude this. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا صَدَقْ صَدَقَنَا وَعْدَهُ وَأَرَّثَنَا الْأَرْضَ Now hope not. When I read this, this is it is now. وَأَرَّثَنَا الْأَرْضَ Arda means earth. And when I was reading the commentary, I said, well, they're struggling a little bit trying to understand this because they connected with the other side and say heaven. Arda is earth. That's here. Okay? But let me keep reading. Natawabbu men al jannati haithu nashabu fa nitmel adrul amini They will say praise be to Allah who are they? Those who entered the paradise, didn't they? Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah, who has truly fulfilled his promise. He promised us paradise. Some measure of it here, big measure in the next life. God promised that. And when we get it, we say, Alhamdulillah, Allah promised it. He fulfilled his promise to us and has given us, has given us this land. Uh oh. Land. He has given us this land as an inheritance. So we are supposed to be praising God for this land. For the earth. So where does that place us then? That it place us on this side of reality? See, you read these things and, and, and you don't get disconnected from this world trying to get to the other world. If Allah wanted us in the other world and not part and come through this world, he would have just put us right over there. But that's not how it's done. This is the world we experience first. So God says, you're supposed to praise God for inheriting some of this earth. Don't forget the subject last week. The righteous shall inherit the earth. Now these crowds that I'm talking about, obviously, this is the righteous crowd. And Allah says, when the righteous get them some of this earth, they will say, Alhamdulillah, God promised. Now, the, the, the old slave masters promised 40 acres and a mule. I don't know, but a few people got that in history. They lied. Now God says, they will say, God, you have given us this land as a heritage. Uh, African Americans God put us in America this is our land this is our country Africa is our motherland yes our fatherland yes don't disconnect ourselves from that but we have seven generations and growing of Africans and American African Americans that have not only inherited this land worked this land made this land productive and made this land the most prosperous land, the most prosperous
this nation on earth. We did that. Our ancestors did that. And had it not been for them, this probably would not be the most prosperous nation on earth if it wasn't for all those slaves in South Carolina, Virginia, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, yes, and Florida. And some states I haven't even mentioned. This is our land as an inheritance. The law. Uh -huh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulil Kareem. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Ayyuhal Muslimun. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. <clears throat> Peace and blessings be upon our noble messenger prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Present peace be upon the Prophet, his family, the companions, the righteous, all, all Muslims, peace be with you again. We say Ahmad and what follows thereafter. Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> now, in concluding this with the five minutes we have left, I want to share with you all this book, and I'm going to read something from it, just one paragraph. It is called The Color of money, black banks and the racial wealth gap, Mercer Bardaran. This is a must read. You have to read this, okay? It's a recent book published in 2019. And the Atlantic Magazine, quoting on it, says, a deep accounting of how America got to a point where a median, their language, white family, has 13 times more wealth than the median black family, their language. 13 times more wealth? How did that happen? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, this whole people. You put them to work. Pack animals and mules, cotton pickers and tobacco pickers and pickers and corn planters, and you use their free labor for more than over 300 years, close to 400 years. You got a head start on these people because you use all their labor for free. Quote, page nine. Historian, and we're praying. Historian, historian, pardon me, Manning, I'm quoting from the book, Manning Marable has lamented that the most striking fact about American economic history and politics is the brutal and systemic underdevelopment of his language. Black people, I prefer African Americans, but this is, I'm reading from the book, his, his language. The brutal, now he used brutal for a reason. Because slavery was brutal. Yeah, well, it was brutal for us. Now the upside, if they could, we can say that, it conditioned us to be the strongest internally, what they call intestinal fortitude, the will, determination, don't quit, don't give up. It conditioned us and trained us like that. Whereas other people, they have a little setback, they're ready in their life. The African Americans say, well, the setback is the norm for us. That's normal. You mean there's something called a setback? <laughs> That's typical for, the, for most African Americans. You know, we all experiencing what y'all call it again. When they had the Great Depression, and folk were jumping out of windows in Wall Street, huh? and the word got down south in the 1930s. Said, oh, it's the Great Depression. 
And they say that the blacks and the African Americans, they say, what, what's that? So everybody loses all their resource money. They say they, they lose us that? What, what they, they lose all? We ain't got no all. <laughs> so they depressed. They killing themselves. They jumping out of windows. Well, that's, that's the way it is in the South. That's the norm in the South. That's what the word was when it got down there. The day of reckoning. Now, thank God, most of that's behind us. The most striking fact, he says, about American economic history and politics is the brutal and systemic underdevelopment of black people, his language. When the Emancipation Proclamation was signed in 1863, became law in 1865, the black community, his language, owned a total of 0.5% of the total wealth in the United States. This number is not surprising. Slaves were forbidden to own anything. And the few freed blacks, his language, living in the North, had few opportunities to accumulate wealth. What is staggering today, 2021, is that more than 150 years later, that number has barely budged. Blacks, his language, still own only about 1% of the trillions of dollars of wealth in the United States of America. When Martin Luther King, still quoting, stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 1963, he said that Quote, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. End quote. Now, I don't have the time. We're doing through Drew Miles. This is, you can't teach everything in one day. There are reasons for this. And in Jacksonville, well, in the state of Florida and around the country. Now, you hear this term, critical race theory. I'm sure you've heard that in the news. They banned it. They, they signed the law here in the state of Florida. Man, you can't teach that. What? Okay, fine. And I'm saying this to the African Americans. Okay, you're not going to find this book, I don't believe, at the University of North Florida. You're not going to find it at FCJC. You're sure not going to find it at Stanton. Donnell Cooper, Butler, William Raines, and Rebo. And they've changed the name of all the Confederate people now, so I don't have all the names of those schools, high schools. So why am I getting that? You got to educate yourself. Don't depend on other people to educate you to tell you the truth about your history. So they don't want to teach the true history. And critical means criticizing. Look at the critical lie. Say, hold on, well, that's a lie right there. You tell it. That ain't true. They don't want that discussion in the public school systems around the United States. So they sign in law. Oh, no, you can't teach that here. But African Americans, the people that is, their ancestors that enslaved our folk, remember there was a time you couldn't even read. They wouldn't allow you to read a book. Why did Frederick Douglass become educated? He had a nice, the second master, nice wife that started teaching him how to read the Bible until the master showed up. This is history. I'm not making this up. Read it. Back check it. And the lady, the wife, the, the European-American lady, she was thinking that the young man needed to learn how to read. So she had the Bible. Teaching Frederick Douglass the Bible. Master walked in and said, teach him how to read the Bible. A slave who is educated is no good, this is his language, no good to us and no good to himself because he's just going to get in trouble with all this learning. How stupid that is. In other words, he's going to become too educated, he's going to realize that, wait a minute, I wasn't created to be no slave and he just might run off. Woo! You have to 
doesn't teach me anything. It's my obligation to learn on my own. It's my obligation to share with my children, grandchildren. It's our obligation. Don't expect these people going to teach you the true history about what happened. It's embarrassing. I get it. I understand it. I do. They don't want their young children who have friends in those classes and classmates and they're doing sleepovers with each other. Now I'm talking about European Americans, Hispanics, and African Americans. All of them spending time together, the young folk. They don't want them in those classes feeling guilty about what their forefathers did. I understand that. I get it. But if you want to move this nation forward, and I'm speaking to these policymakers, let them tell the truth. You didn't do it. You benefited from it, but you didn't do it. So let it be told. So now, tell the truth of what happened. Tell the truth of what, you know, and I saw a European American lady that I through this. She wrote a book. She, she was on the news the other day. She said, I feel so bad. She said, I'm not responsible for slavery, but my ancestors, I found out, were responsible for slavery, and I have benefited tremendously from it. I'm well off. I do it, but I got to put the word out. This was wrong, and we need to correct it. I found out that some, she did, my, some of my ancestors was a part of burning down Black Wall Street. And I got to figure out, because we benefited from that. How do we repair that? How do we correct that? This is the day of reckoning. Chickens have come. Not only the chickens, the roosters have come home to roost. Eagles landed and everything come to say, hey, y'all had a free run for 40 years, but at some point y'all got to correct this. So all you good people out there, all of America, that had nothing to do with any of this, you keep on creating these relationships, keep on standing up for the truth, don't carry the guilt. No, I'm not, I'm not putting you through no guilt trip. Don't carry the guilt of your forefathers and your foreparents. Don't carry that. But don't you act like them. Don't you be like them. You push back on these oppressive voter laws as some of you all are doing, restricting people from voting. Push back on those things and say, no, 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 no. This is the day of reckoning. We can't continue to let things go on like it has in the past. These people, African Americans and others, but particularly African Americans, built this nation. It's time for them to reap some of the harvest. Robin the Athen Afit Dunya Hassan. Wafir Athen the Hassanatan. Wakina Adan bin now. Our Lord grant us the best that this world has to offer us. And grant us the best that the next world has to offer us. And save us from the punishment of the files of sins. Amen. Come on, Salah. Those of y'all who are joining us on YouTube Live and also Facebook Live, if this is your first time, we make the same two rock hours unit of prayer that we make. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Nabudu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhina Namta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maqdubi Alayhim Walad Dhalin Ameen Alam Nashwalak Sadra ووضعنا أن يقوصرك الذي أنكر ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع الأسر يسرا إن مع الأسر يسرا 
فَإِذَا فَرَقَتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْبَمْ الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبض وإياك نستعين إهلنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين قل هو الله أهد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ربنا لا تسب قلوبنا بعد تليتنا وحبنا من لدود رحمة إنك أنت وحاب الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المحذوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين تقف الله May Allah accept our prayers Thank you all for joining us on YouTube live Facebook live uh, Brothers and uh, a couple of sisters, those of y'all before you leave, make sure you make your contributions on the way out. Those of y'all who would like to support our efforts here in Jacksonville, we thank those of y'all who do. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. We are grateful. Those of you who would like to support our efforts here, go to our website, www.alislam. Put a hyphen between the A-L hyphen Islam. L hyphen Islam. WorldwideMinistry.com. You'll be able to donate on there on the site. And while you're on the site, you'll be able to shop. There are some t shirts there. Our sister, who's very talented, uh, Sister Keisha, some items there, some potholders, some table settings, some t shirts, caps, face masks. You can shop online. And she also will wholesale some of the items because we've had some people asking about wholesale. She also has a wholesale price if you'd like to sell some of these items in your local communities. If you want to mail your contribution in, those of y'all who have, thank you for that. Al Islam Worldwide Ministry, Post Office Box 3204, 
Jacksonville, Florida, 32206. When you're on YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Alexander Worldwide Ministry. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. When you go back to look at the lecture on YouTube, you want to share it? I'm t I'm, I put it up under the title of the Juma. So today is the day of sorting crowds, or the sorting of crowds, pardon me, the sorting of crowds. So you put in the sorting of crowds, Juma prayer, Imam Yahya Abdullah, or you put in Imam Yahya Abdullah, and it'll pull up the Juma prayers there. Thank you all very much. Wear your mask, stay safe, wash your hands, practice physical distance. Thank you for joining us. Join us again next week, inshallah, God willing. Masjid Muhammad. And on YouTube, the Elisong Worldwide Ministry, 1.30 p.m. for the Jumai. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you.